Logarithmic equations. A quick note on logarithms. Well, before we get into logarithmic equations, finding domain and solutions, let's try to understand what logarithms are. Okay, and here I'll give you something which will be of your interest. Uh, you've been doing things like this, solving equations like uh, 2x equals to 10. Now, that's also an equation, an algebraic equation, right? So if you have to find x, what do you do? It is 2 times x equals to 10. So you do, you divide by 2 and get what x is. You get x equals to 10 divided by 2. And then you get x equals to 5. And that's your solution, right? Perfect. So you know exactly what is reverse of multiplication. You know it's division and you get your answer. And uh, let's do this thing. If we have... Uh, x square equals to 16 and if I want to find what x is well you know x should be square root of 16 correct so we say well so x should be equals to square root of 16 to get the answer right if that's that's correct now square root of 16 well this is a, another story whenever you do square root you do plus and minus right because both will give you the answer and you get an answer of plus and minus 4 you exactly know what to do and get the answer correct now but if you have 2 to the power of x equals to let us say 7 now 2 to the power of x is 7 uh, how will you know what is x now from here x equals to what that is a big question well reverse of square was square root reverse of multiplication was division but exponential function reverse that we don't know so this is what which led to logs right now log is actually inverse of exponential function so that is a kind of uh, background which i wanted to share with you that log is inverse of exponential function is that okay so that is what is a main thing which you should keep in mind, which I think you know, uh, but this is good to share before getting into details of uh, logarithmic equations. Now, that leads to a couple of other interesting things, and that is about domain and range. Now, let's look into the exponential function. Now, if you see the exponential function, uh, it should be looking like something like this. Let me draw exponential function of 2 to the power of x. It is kind of like this, right? As x approaches large number, the function approaches a large number. As x approaches very, very low small numbers and negative ones, you lead to zero, right? But you're never at zero. You're above zero. And when x is zero, anything to the power of zero, you know, is one. So y-intercept is always one. Now, you will appreciate from here that in an exponential function, base, this is called the base and that is the exponent. So base is always positive, right? Base cannot be negative. So in general, exponential function can be written as b to the power of x, where b is base, correct? And x is exponent. And we say properties of b is that b has to be greater than 0, right? And second is that b is not equal to 1, correct? I hope you know the reasons for this. If b is 1, 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So it will be a line like this. It will not be an exponential function, correct? And if b is less than 0, then, then what's the problem? The problem is that if b is, let us say, negative 2, then even numbers will give me positive value. Odd numbers will give me negative value as an exponent, right? Think like this, negative 2 to the power of 2 is positive 4, but negative 2 to the power of 3 is negative 8. So you go from positive 4 to negative 8, right? So it's not a continuous function. So those things don't work. So base has to be always greater than 0 and not equal to 1. So this is about the exponential function. And that is, I should say, base is this. And that is the restriction on base. And x could be anything. And x is belongs to real numbers and that's the domain of your exponential function how about the range well that's the domain let me write domain of exponential function is this and the range is you can see 
that x is greater than 0, right? It is never equal to 0, correct? x is greater than 0. Now, if you have a reciprocal function, or rather inverse, log is inverse of this, right? So if you have inverse of exponential function, then what should happen? Domain should become the range, and range should become the domain for your inverse function, right? And therefore, we have here a restricted domain, and that is the domain here is greater than equal to greater than zero, not equal to zero. Okay, and the range is all real numbers. Range is x belongs to real number. Do you see? Since log, and that is log inverse of exponential is log, and that is why log has a restricted domain, but not range. Exponential function has a restricted range but not domain. Do you see that? So that's how it is. And how do you get the values? You could also get the values by drawing a line here which is y equals to x and if you flip this on the line or reflect it on the line then you get your exponential function which will be kind of like this. And that point is always going to be at 1 since this is 1, right? So they kind of flip, right? So log of 0 is always so, I mean, x-intercept is always 1 for log, correct? So, log, you know, the domain has to be, has to be greater than 0, correct? That is kind of important. And log of 1 is always 0, right? So, so this is kind of like log of 1 is equals to 0. You can see that. That is the x-intercept. And here, if you have anything to the power of 0 that is b to the power of 0 is always 1 so that is kind of reciprocal of one another very important to understand and with this knowledge i think it's absolutely clear to you what we're talking about and in general we will write log function as log to the base b of x is equals to y you know y is always the output correct um, and exponential function is b to the power of x is equals to y is that okay that is how it is right so so now it flips remember in both base is same do you see that base is same that's kind of correlation and as far as domain and range i think now it's absolutely clear to you that domain of log logarithmic function is restricted right since it is inverse of exponential function perfect now with this we'll move on and try to do some uh, understanding of logarithmic equations. We'll start with understanding domain of those functions since you know we have restricted domain here for log function, correct? So, and then we will solve the equations. Remember, sometimes in equations you'll get answers which will not fall in the domain and they will not be part of your true answers, correct? So you need to always check your answers when you work with logs. Okay, all the best. And let's move on to solving logarithmic equations. First, four questions will be on domain, and then we will have a few questions on expressions of logarithmic equations, expressions rather, and then we'll move on to logarithmic equations. Thank you. All the best.